on those guys today. They're working for uh, de Blasio in the, in the uh, vice department. So there was a guy um, with Hall It was uh, my father and all low I was talking about one. Oh, one arm Frank. It's a short story, two minutes. Give me, indulge me, it's summer. And one arm Frank had one arm. But in those days, you, you, you didn't ignore the anomaly or disability. You talked about it with the guy. So the guys, it was simple guys in my father's store, named them one arm Frank because he had one arm. I don't know how he lost it, maybe in the war. I don't know. He sewed, the sleeve was sewn into his pocket. He always wore a nice suit. And the sleeve was sewn into the pocket. So I didn't know as a kid. We weren't ridiculing him. So oh, here's one arm Frank. So he didn't take offense at that. Now, one arm Frank was another guy, a very nice guy, hung around in my father's store, milled about. He had one problem. And we're driving home. My father would give him a lift home to Williamsburg, Brooklyn, over the near the Kosciuszko Bridge, which stank unto itself from the Truns meat plant there. You could die from it. It was an abattoir where they killed the, por the pork, the pigs, and the stink in the summer, you would get blind. It's lucky there weren't more accidents with cars falling off the Kosciuszko Bridge. The stink was so overwhelming when they were rendering the fat. He lived in one of those apartments with, like, the floors were irregular. That My uncle lived in one of them where he had a little Boston Terrier. I remember to this day, my uncle, that when the dog would pee on the floor, it would run down, like, from one side of the living room to the other on the linoleum. I swear to God, this is like old New York, sir. So, Frank, we'd drop him off. Now, if it was winter time, you had to keep the windows closed. You'd freeze to death, you know, five degrees, ten below. You had a heater on. This guy, if you'd get him talk, you didn't want to talk to one on Frank in the car because, unfortunately, he had a medicinal problem, the breath. And it would, em it would e e emit from the mouth. And at first, we didn't know what it was. And my father would think he hit an animal somewhere on the road, but with no animals in, in New York in those days on the road. And then they would, li like you're driving, you pick up your shoe. <laughs> You'd pick up your shoe to see if you had stepped in something. But no, it was one arm Frank talking. Now, what do you do in a case like that when you like the guy? You say you stink, open the window, you'd freeze to death. Anyway, I'm giving an example. You don't, you don't encounter people like that today. With the advent of Lavoris and the obsession with mouth cleanliness, you don't have any individuals around like that. Does anyone know? No, don't call me. That's a stupid show topic. Come on. And it's a little silly, I get it. But truthfully, where has the halitosis gone? It's been eliminated from our society. With the obsession with cleaning and dental floss and picks. I know guys who made $300 million inventing a dental pick. The guy retired. He invented the pick that you rub in between your teeth. I don't understand fortunes people make from things like this. Did I blow through another stop set? I did. I can't believe it. I meant to talk about serious stuff like uh, Jeb Bush. You know, you think about it, Jeb Bush is so not ready for this. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. Welcome back. Here's a little news story. We'll throw you some red meat. It's from Newsmax. Former Bill Clinton... President Bill Clinton attempted repeatedly to get approval from Hillary Clinton's State Department for lucrative speaking engagements in two of the most repressive countries in the world, North Korea and the Congo, according to ABC News. Listen to this. Are you ready to show you what a prize this couple is? While Hillary served as Secretary of State, Bill earned speaking fees around the globe, totaling more than $48 million. Now, what's interesting is the speeches had to be vetted by the State Department to ensure that there were no conflicts of interest with Hillary's work as America's top diplomat. See, this is how it works. This is Diane Feinstein and husband. This is how it works. One works in the government, the other works in the private sector. Then they shift roles and they rake it in. This is what's called the death of a nation. This is what's called corruption. The emails, which have come to light because of public records request by the conservative group Citizens United, which sued the State Department to get the documents, show just how far Bill Clinton was willing to go to earn those lucrative fees, seeking approval for appearances with ties to two of the most brutal countries in the world. What more do I need to say to you? Is that what you really want running America? Is that the nation you want to live in, where you have despotic individuals who will go to any level to make a buck? According to the email, 
the Harry Walker Agency, which helps Bill Clinton coordinate his speeches, advised the 42nd president's president to decline the invitation to the Congo based on the particularly grim human rights record of Congo and its leader, Joseph Kabila. Can you believe this? $650,000 invitation to Bill Clinton to speak in the Congo. And for the speaking fee, dictators of the Congo and the Democratic Republic of the Congo required photos with the former president. Now you know how it works. Now you understand why no conservatives are ever invited to speak at any college. Now you understand what is what in the world of what. Now let's go to the callers that are left in this hour in the Savage Nation. WABC, Andrew, fire away. You're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Topics are... Goodbye. Goodbye. That's the voice. I hear that voice. It's gone. It's Hell's Kitchen. KSFO, Vic, you got the last word. Fire away. Dr. Savage, yeah, I'm out here in Ohio. Uh Listen, first off, I might take Professor Erwin Corey with halitosis. That's one guy I might be able to handle with halitosis. Uh, he's beautiful, as you know. Um, I'm calling you because creative neurotics. Um, I, I've had a very uh, uh, distinguished career as a creative guy, and I'm diagnosed with all of the above, you know. And um, and I and I learned the the lesson of hard work, as you have, I think, correctly clocked by by watching my dear father, who committed suicide, was a severe manic depressive, and by observing him. I saw that, that while he struggled with his disease, there was also free will in there. And I could see that uh, not operating as I, as I thought he, he could have. And it was by watching him, and uh, forgive me for saying this, Dad, but being, being a little lazy with, his, with, 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 his, with free will and just letting the disease kind of overcome him that when I became later on, as it kind of hits people in their young adult years, um, I realized that um, I, I had to battle with it, overcome it, and and take charge of it. That's right. You had to overcome your impulses, in other words, right? Exactly. And, and, uh, you know, I once met a very religious man, and he said to me, do you think I don't have feelings? Do you think I'm not attracted to women? Do you think I don't see what they look like? He said that to me. He said, of course I do. He said, I just control the impulse. In other words, you assume that a religious man doesn't have the same impulses or feelings that the rest of us do, but they do. But they suppress these feelings, which is what made all of civilization what it is. The suppression of impulses is the fountain of creativity. It's the essence of civilization. And the hippie era came along and said, let it all hang out, man. If it feels good, do it. Why not do it in the road? Now look at the mess we have. Bums crapping in the street, races at each other's throats, all because of the hippie mentality. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It is. Let it hit the next loud thing, then I'm going to do this song here. Why is it taking so long? Uh, where the song go? It disappeared. All right, the plane just crashed again. The fill-in uh, board operator, he's doing a great job. I couldn't do it. But every minute I feel like I'm having a, a, like a heart palpitation. All right, turn it off. Forget music altogether. Let's just stick to talk radio. Welcome to the program. Hour three. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is where the boys are separated from the men, or the men from the boys, and here we are. So what do you want to talk about? We're talking about so many topics that for me to review them would bore you. So therefore, the best thing for me to do is read a headline from World Net Daily that just came out. Megyn Kelly eyeing move to Fox News' rival, CNN. <clears throat> According to Cheryl Chumley, cable network's biggest star wants to go mainstream. Now, why is CNN mainstream? I don't get it. 
Their ratings are lower than that of Fox, so they're offering the bimbo a bigger price. I mean, the, uh, the, the, uh, the host a bigger price, that's all. She's like any other person in that particular business. They go to the, the best price. It's the, you know, they say that a certain walk of life is the world's oldest profession. I would argue that the media is the world's old, oldest profession in, in that, as I said in the last hour, the prophets were media people without microphones, and they were looking for an audience. So what's different? So she wants to go mainstream. She was flirting with CNN from Fox to CNN. Why would, why would anyone want to go from Fox to CNN? Why would you want to be around those losers? I don't get them. More money, that's all. A bigger payday. What else? What, is there something new under the sun? Look, the fact of the matter is, she's ready for CNN. She's actually really ready for NBC. Megan has targeted Trump during the debate. And the fact of the matter is, the end was when she went on Howard Stern and talked about her breast size, her sex life, and her husband's uh, uh, apparatus. The woman has no dignity. She's an entertainer. That's all she's ever done. And Fox built her up. So now she's looking to jump for a bigger buck. It's the American way. And she belongs in the Commie News Network. Fox daily viewership is 42% of the market. CNN's daily viewership is 16% of the market, right? Why would anyone go there? More money. That's all. She's better suited for CNN. That's where her politics really lie. She'll be, she'll be more relaxed. And I wish her good luck because it's a tough business to begin with. The last thing we want is for her to be upset in any way. That's the end of the news for this hour. 855 472 wmal Ben, welcome to the program. What's on your mind, Ben? Uh, I wanted to tell you you're just the greatest. I'm I am. 77 years old, and I've been listening to you for, God, I don't know how many years. But I enjoy your show, and you say it the way it is. And this country's in deep doo-doo at the moment, and uh, I'm not sure how it's ever going to get itself out of there. But you really right, but, but but what I'm trying to do is bring humor to the mess. <laughs> well, that, that's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, the truth is, we've all had a very rough week. The shooting to death uh, this week of that young lady reporter and the newsman by that maniac, and the fact that the media is covered up, that he had a gay flag in his apartment, which is a very significant story, by the way, because, you know, all it took was one con one nut with a Confederate flag for the lunatics on the left to demand that the Confederate flag be ripped down, that statues of Confederate generals be uh, overturned, that Confederate generals be disinterred. I mean, it's a sick society where we let the, the rabble determine the course of human events. But that's just what's going on. And that's because the man at the top wants it to go on that way. That's the truth. But I don't want to get sidetracked. I want to stay a little on the higher side. And I want to maintain the ability to read news stories intermittent with some humor. And that's what I've been trying to do. So let's go back to the neurotic creative story. Let's go back to my jokes. Let's go back to the news. Tony on WABC, what's your point? Go ahead, please. Yes, Dr. Savage. I love when you get intellectual because I want to give you three concepts, and then I want you to take on it. One is what inspired me along this thinking is a guy named Kurt Gödel. He committed suicide. He was a genius mathematician who was a friend of Einstein's. And he wrote this book called Incomplete. And I got to understand what he was saying, that there is no system complete if it isn't man-made. The universe is an open-ended system, so therefore all the templates we make to understand things in a continuous uh, pattern are really part illusion. So the only thing we have, and I'll quote William James, the universe is continuous and discontinuous. So that's an ambigu ambiguity that makes all the academic institutions intellectual prostitutes. Which we do <laughs> well, let, let me interject, because if you and I were just talking as we are, even though it's across the airwaves with millions of people kind of listening in this passive audience, we're having a discussion about what is reality. Isn't that what we're saying? Well, creativity, is it reality or is it the ability to create illusion 
which is very much a part of reality. I'll give you an answer that's 